talk about his work that he's been doing with Warwick universities around um, the use of data uh, in displacement settings. Thank you, Rob, over to you. Thank you, Juan. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how I share my screen. Do you need any help? Should yeah. be the green, bright green button at the uh, bottom of your it's screen. The, it's the bright green button straight in front of me. Sorry, Sorry about that. Um, where is the presentation? Um, da, 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 da. Just a two. Da, 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 da. Hmm. Sorry, I'm just uh, trying to. There we go. Colleagues can just let me know uh, if you can see the screen okay. Yep, perfect. Wonderful. Uh, sorry about um, that. Sorry, Rob. One second. Uh, yeah, of course. Because now we can see both of your slides. Okay. You let, me, uh, let me let yeah. me uh, disconnect my computer screen. It's the second screen. How's that? I think it's the presentation setting. Hello. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, Wang, can you hear me? Yep, perfect. You're right there, Rob. Are you fixing something on your settings, Rob? We seem to have lost, oh, there you are. What happened? So Rob just lost his sound. Um, we're gonna give him a second. But if you have any questions on the previous presentations or discussion, uh, please uh, do let us know. Um, I think most of our presenters are still um, with us as well. Um, and um, Meanwhile, I just got confirmation from Richard that he is coming online in a minute. Um, and then uh, he'll be right here as well to talk about South Sudan and the transition um, that is taking place at the moment, which I think is also really useful and interesting to hear um, as they transition from the protection of civilian sites into normal IDP sites with um, local authorities as a camp administrator. Um, Rob, we can see your screen again now. Um, are you still out of sound? No, no, I'm good. Sorry, I uh, I disconnected my second screen and for some reason it, it took away my sound. Apologies about, about, that, um, talk, about that issue. Uh, okay. Yeah, Grant, so uh, thank you, Juan, for uh, in, um, inviting me to speak today. It's a pleasure to speak to, to CCM colleagues. Um, so today I'm going to quickly um, just give a short, um, more of just a briefing on, a, on an ongoing project that IOM um, is part of um, titled Data and Displacement. And it's looking at the, uh, it's assessing the practical and ethical implications of tackling humanitarian protection through data um, with the case studies um, in displacement sites. So um, just a quick, uh, a quick overview. So uh, it's funded by the, UK, uh, the UK's Research Innovations, um, UK Arts Humanitarian Research Council, and with uh, FCD, FCDO. Um, but when the time, when, at the time the grant was developed, that was differed. So it's basically uh, uh, the UK, it's a UK research, academic research fund supported by DFID. Um, the project partners are the University of Warwick. So this is uh, this is not a traditional humanitarian grant. Um, it's not a traditional humanitarian research grant. It's a, it's a pure academic grant with a humanitarian component. 
So the principle in how UK funding works with academic grants is that the lead of the project, should we say, is called a principal investigator. And that uh, has to be a academic institute. So Warwick University, Professor Victoria Squires is the PI, as we're called, uh, as she's called. Um, and then IOM, the University of Ibadan in Nigeria and the University of Juba in South Sudan are the co-investigators, so the co-I. So, and we've all got um, slightly different roles, which I'll, I'll get into shortly. Um, so a quick overview of the project objectives. So uh, the initial call when it came about was basically uh, how can, how can, well, the call was about humanitarian protection and it had a number of different themes. And one of them was the, uh, um, in the role of targeting, uh, but the role of targeting when it comes to data. So how can data be used effectively to target, but also maybe uh, data's bias. So what also, how can that also lead to people becoming um, sidelined when it comes to targeting through data? For example, if you've got certain populations where, uh, or certain themes of data that are very uh, accessible in terms of data acquisition, then maybe that creates a spotlight, a spotlight effect on certain phenomena or populations or communities, um, and therefore creating a kind of a dark patch on others. And the the entire project, the the, the theme to describe it was really um, how <coughs> to prevent people from falling through the cracks. And um, so the the, the the without kind of reading too uh, much off the off the side the, the objective is to really review the current the current data ecosystem the data humanitarian ecosystem that is in, in an operating context and because the humanitarian data kind of ecosystem is a complex network uh con confiding it to smaller operational areas such as camp settings seem like the most um uh, bite size and manageable uh, manageable way to kind of take this research on and the idea is to identify any operational and ethical challenges arising from data driven targeting um, yeah so um, a big part of this through the local uh, the local co-investigators at the Nigerian South Sudan level is really to kind of get the local uh, local engagement at with national NGOs, civil society, national governments on how really uh, they they use data to target. So, you know, uh, we all kind of work within the HPC, you know, HP, H, HNO kind of bubbles. And this is looking a bit more kind of holistically and a bit more longer term with the localization element with the, with the local actors. And um, yeah, so uh just uh, the research questions i'm just going to move my slide sorry i'm um I'm, I'm aware i lost a few minutes so i'm uh i am kind of running through so uh so which is why i'm going a bit quick but uh, i'll share my i'll share my email in the chat so if anyone wants to follow up a bit longer um so basically the four main uh, research questions and, and as this is an academic grant um we all moan as humanitarians that we can never get kind of multi-year funding and everything has to be done quite quick. The academic community is almost the opposite. It's uh, everything's done quite slow. And this is over a 24 month process. So um, you really see the difference when it comes to, this is not an operational piece of research. It's, it's definitely an academic piece of research. So the, the core questions to be answered by partners is how do context, contextual factors shape the production of the humanitarian data ecosystem? Um, how effective is the use of database targeting for the provision of humanitarian assistance in practice, what operational challenges arise in the collection and use of large scale quantitative data um, for humanitarian assistance, and what ethical concerns emerge in the development of data driven humanitarian systems, and how can these be addressed? So they're quite big questions, um, but this is, um, we have a team of about 20, we have eight co-investigators and I think an additional eight researchers um, based um, tackling this for the next 24 months. And I'm gonna quickly jump to the, the more interesting part. So um, like with a lot of academic grants, um, there is an academic advisory group. So these, uh, the role of this group here is to really make sure the research is, is contributing to kind of academic literature on this topic. And 
which will be interesting, but I'm not sure if it's totally kind of usable at field level. So the role of IOM in this research as well was to really make sure um, there was an operational perspective to this work. It was multidisciplinary. So uh, IOM were the leads of establishing the practitioners advisory group. And these are colleagues from, um, uh, we have Cecilia Jimenez de Mari, the Special Rapporteur on Human Rights of IDPs. Uh, we have Kimberly Robinson from UNHCR, who, who's been a big part of CCCM. Uh, colleagues from, this, from data, from the Cent OCHA's Center for Humanitarian Data. Uh, Juan, uh, the Global CCM Coordinator for IOM that we all know, is, uh, is part of this group. And the idea is that this kind of, uh, this mix between academic and operational research is, is, con is we'll get into kind of peer review journals, we'll look at the protection element of the role of data it has, uh, but also how can it actually improve our operations? Like if we know that uh, if we're collecting kind of the low hanging fruit data, should we say, um, is that, and that may create, um, a, you know, because, um, you know, some data is just much harder to get than others, but it's the difference between null and zero. Just because we don't have data on a certain topic, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So what ways can we supplement when data doesn't exist? Looking at new techniques, looking at, um, you know, what may be the impacts if we, um, if yeah, if we only focus on areas we do have data, for example. So that's, um, and that's kind of comes back to the, the call for the project about um, um, not letting people fall through the cracks. Um, just a bit on the timeline, is that um, the project kicked off formally in October. Um, so, and it'll be running through until sept September 2022. And the objectives are, are peer review journals, as well as some practitioner guides. Um, and then the practitioner advisory groups um, will be happening every six months, which Juan um, is part of and kind of representing the CCM cluster in that. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're really in the nascent stages of this, um, but it's kind of, it's really cool research. It's, it's basically a big, not, not, it's like an informal kind of impact assessment of the, the humanitarian data ecosystem, how it operates and, but also where it's effective, but also maybe where it can be improved. And then the goal of, the, with the, with the, pre, with the PAG, the practitioner advisory group is to really feed back in and maybe how we can make certain things more effective, how can it, we improve the data policy, the data responsibility work that uh, our colleagues in OCHA and elsewhere are working on. And that's kind of really the uh, the goal for the output over the course of the project. Um, I feel like I rushed out a little bit, but I, I know I lost some, I know I lost some minutes, but um, but maybe uh, one can share my my contacts. I, uh, this, this presentation is completely public um, and I, I, I can share this with Juan and Brian and the team. And then if anyone has any questions, then I can, um, if they want to be engaged, if they're in a particular context of Nigeria and South Sudan, where the case studies will be happening in year two, uh, then it'll be great to kind of have that discussion and link up with our local partners at the universities in uh, Ibadan and, and Juba. Thank you, Rob. Um, maybe while you catch your breath, if you can stay with us for a little bit longer, because the next presentation from Najib is um, actually about the challenge of keeping track of population numbers in informal settlements in well, urban informal settlements. Did I get that right? Yes, something like this. So I think maybe I'll let you um, catch your breath, uh, share any links you would like to in the chat 